Dianthus. This is what Dianthus seeds look like. I sow Dianthus seeds by broadcasting them evenly across the soil surface. Please keep soil moist until seeds germinate. Dianthus seeds start to germinate. More seeds start to germinate. This is what Dianthus cotyledon look like. Before sowing my Dianthus seeds, I make sure the soil I using is in the moist condition. Using dry soil for sowing seeds will repelling water rather than absorbing it. To prevent this from happening, Mix your growing media with water first, before start sowing. For me, Dianthus seed usually germinate between day 3 to day 10. You could start Dianthus indoors and transplant later. True leaf start to emerge. You can sow indoors eight weeks before the last frost in spring. For starting seed indoor, as soon as seedlings emerge, provide light to seedlings. You can put them on a sunny windowsill or grow seedlings three to four inches beneath fluorescent plant lights. For growing seedling using grow lights, do not leave lights on for 24 hours. Please give the seedling 8 to 10 hours of dark period. Using incandescent bulbs will not work for this process because they will get too hot. Before planting in the garden, seedling plants need to be hardened off. Hardening off is the process of gradually acclimatizing indoor sown plants to outdoor conditions. Be sure to protect young dianthus plants from wind and hot sun. If frost threatens at night, cover or bring containers indoors, then take them out again in the morning. This hardening off process toughens the plant's cell structure and reduces transplant shock and scalding. If you don't harden your plants, the young plants will get burned by the sun, the shock of cold, or the wind. For most plants, begin hardening off a week before the final frost date for your area. After your plant have been hardening off, you can transplant them to new container or sowing directly in the garden. For planted to new container, choose your desirable pot that is 1 to 2 inch larger than the current size, if the plant is currently in a 10 inch pot or smaller. If your current pot size is greater than 10 inch, Choose a pot that is 2 to 3 inch larger in diameter. You can use whatever growing media available to your convenience. As long you use well-drained and fertile loamy soils for growing dianthus, you will be fine. pH for dianthus plants is a neutral to slightly alkaline soil. My soil pH when I try to grow dianthus are about 7 pH. Soil I use for growing dianthus contain cocoa peat, red burn soil, micro, fine sand, old humus, and charcoal. 
Using heavy soil for growing dianthus will resulting in root rot. Also, if you can, please make sure that your growing media are sterilized and clean. By choosing sterilized and clean growing media will minimize new seedlings from becoming infected from disease-causing pathogens. For me, best time to transplant dianthus to new container are in early morning or late afternoon. Dianthus seeds require light to germinate. For me, optimal temperature for dianthus germination is 24 degrees Celsius, 75.2 degrees Fahrenheit. For me, optimal temperature range for growing dianthus is about 21 to 30 degrees Celsius. When you propagate by seeds, it is common to have some seeds fail to germinate. Dianthus success germination rate depend on seeds quality, seed age, moisture and temperature. For me, on average, dianthus seed viability are about one years. Seed viability is greatly affected by its quality at the time of collection, its treatment between collection, storage, and the conditions in which it is stored. My minimum temperature when growing dianthus is 22 degrees Celsius. My maximum temperature when growing dianthus is 32 degrees Celsius. My average humidity when growing dianthus are about 82%. I grow my dianthus in tropical climate. Dianthus prefer to grow in full sun. Dianthus need at least six hours of sun to thrive. Dianthus also can be grown in partial shade location. If you growing dianthus in partial shade location, your plant may not flower profusely compared to full sun growing dianthus. In my climate, I grow my dianthus in full sun location. Container size I use for growing dianthus, height 22 centimeters, width 29 centimeters. The bigger the container, the bigger root system will develop and will result in bigger plant. If grow dianthus in the garden, space plants around 30 centimeters, 12 inch apart. Most dianthus species have a spread of between 6 inch, 15 centimeters, and 12 inch, 30 centimeters. Dianthus have about 340 species of flowering plants in the family Caryophyllaceae. Dianthus can grow up to 92 centimeters tall, depending on the variety, and has an erect growth form. When growing dianthus, please make sure your container have good drainage. Growing dianthus in waterlogged container will promote root rot. For me, the advantage for growing in container is gives me more control over sunlight, moisture, and temperature. Dianthus is typically grown as a landscape use for borders, beds, cottage gardens, rock gardens, as well as container planting. If grow dianthus in the garden, plant them closely together for best effect. Dianthus native to Europe, Asia, and Africa. Dianthus lifespan in my climate is a short-lived perennial. Since dianthus have about 340 species, some species are perennials, biennials and annuals. Dianthus is propagate by seeds. For this growing season, on average my water usage are about 300 milliliters every time I water my plant. In my climate, I only water my plant when the soil a little bit dry. 
Time I water my dianthus is between 7 to 8 in the morning. Water usage depend on container size, container type, weather, and climate you live in. Your water usage may be different than me. In my climate, dianthus water preference are moderate watering. For me, it easier to overwater than underwater. Overwatering will promote root rot. Always water dianthus at the root zone. Do not water from overhead. Also, if you can, please avoid watering in the evening. Since at night, water tends to rest in the soil around the roots, which encourages fungal growth and insects infestation. This is why morning watering is preferable to evening watering as the plant has time to dry before the sun goes down. Flower buds emerging. I start using fertilizer after two months of planting. After that, I fertilize my plant every three months. When growing my dianthus, I use liquid fertilizer. You can use whatever fertilizer available to your convenience. Dianthus are light feeders and won't need much fertilization. Please don't overfeed the plant. Some sign of overfertilization are defoliation, very slow or no growth, yellowing and wilting of lower leaf and browning leaf tips. Dianthus flower in full bloom at soil temperature 35 degrees Celsius. Dianthus flower consists of five petals with dentate margins. Dianthus flower come in many colors ranging from red, pink, and white, patterned. Dianthus flower size are about 2 to 3 centimeters diameter. Dianthus flower are bisexual flowers. Bisexual flowers are contain both male and female reproductive organs in the same flower. On the other hand, unisexual flowers contain male and female reproductive organs in separate flowers. Dianthus flower grouping arranged are in cluster inflorescence. Dianthus flower location are at the terminal at the ends of the stems. Dianthus flower require deadheading after the flower is spent. Deadheading is a gardening term for the removal of dead or dying flowers from a plant. Since dianthus may rebloom on each stem, it requires a bit of caution when deadheading. Dianthus are drought-tolerant plants. Since dianthus is such a prolific bloomer, it is easier to wait until there are many spent flowers rather than deadhead one by one. To prune dianthus, check the stems of the dead dianthus blooms for new flower buds. If flower buds are present, use the pruning shears to cut the stem to half an inch above the flower buds. If there are no flower buds, 
Cut the stem down to the first set of leaves below the dead flower. By deadheading in Dianthus, we also can maintain a attractive plant's appearance. I am using pruning shears when deadheading my Dianthus. Before deadheading, I sanitized my pruning shears. I sterilized my pruning shears using rubbing alcohol swab. My rubbing alcohol swab contains 70% isopropyl alcohol. According to the Center for Disease Control, isopropyl alcohol in concentrations of 70% or more will disinfect surfaces for bacteria, fungi, and viruses. Hardiness zones for Dianthus in USA is zone 3 to 9. If your container have some weeds grow in it, you need to do some weed control. Weed control is done to limit weed infestations and minimize competition between Dianthus and noxious weeds. Some disease you may encounter when trying to grow Dianthus, alternaria leaf spot, powdery mildew, bacterial slow wilt, downy mildew, and botrytis. Some pests you may encounter when trying to grow dianthus, thrips, cyclamen mite, aphids, and spider mites. Disease and pest-affected dianthus can be prevent by good cultural practices, providing good air circulation, do not overcrowd plants, avoid watering at night, and keep soil from soggy condition. According to American Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals website, Dianthus is toxic to dogs and toxic to cats. When cat or dogs consume Dianthus, they will have mild gastrointestinal irritation and mild dermatitis. Since pets frequently chew on new plants introduced to the home, please take precaution. It is recommended to keep Dianthus out of the reach of your pets. It is also recommended to keep Dianthus out of the reach of young children. If you suspect your pet may have ingested potentially toxic substance, contact your local animal poison control or your local veterinarian as soon as possible. Dianthus was mentioned by the Greek botanist Theophrastus. The name Dianthus is from the Greek words dios, god, and anthos, flower. Dianthus easy to grow and everyone who love flowers should try to grow them. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe for more videos.